Hello friends, James Stevenson back with my Tesla earnings results variance recap video. I just sent out a tweet about this with my waterfall chart that I send out with all my variances uh, after each time Tesla reports earnings. Uh, but this is also a breakfast with Loki video, so let's get Loki into the shot. Uh, I added a Loki spot header to the background behind Loki there because I, I thought he needed more than just the velvet backdrop uh, behind him. So uh, you can know that that's the special spot for Loki. Let's feed him breakfast and see if he'll eat today or see if he'll eat breakfast right away this morning. He always eats his breakfast. He just doesn't always do it instantly. So let's see if we can get Loki to eat. Eat your food, buddy. Okay, I'm going to try incentivizing him with half a milk bone. Okay, good boy, buddy. And while he does that, I will show you what's on my desktop. We'll get to this in a minute. Uh, here's the tweet that I sent out this morning uh, with my waterfall chart. I will make a video explaining this in more detail while you're watching that video right now. Let me get rid of that sidebar that always annoys me. Okay, so if I click on this, uh, this is the information we'll be going over. So it's actually framed up okay uh, in this uh, view. So I'll just stay here and talk about it for a minute. So what I forecast for Q4 2022 non-GAAP earnings was $5,164,000,000. That's this bar on the left. Then what Tesla reported yesterday was $4,106,000,000 worth of non-GAAP earnings. And what you see in between is for every line item reported on the income statement, how much different my forecast was from what Tesla reported. So about, about a $24 billion uh, base, revenue base, uh, against which all of these variances can be measured. And I'll share with you the very quick Cliff Notes version of it. It was this provision for income taxes of $775 million unfavorable because Tesla did not take that one-time tax favorability. Again, I'm always a bridesmaid and never a bride. That's the third time I forecast that Tesla would take this and that they haven't taken it. And they may never. So I think what I'll do is I'll just stop forecasting it and then Tesla will take it. That's probably my luck for how that will go. Uh, so that's, that's most of it. And then the rest of it is visible here at the gross, uh, well, there is no gross margin line on this chart, but if there were one, it would be between the cost of sales and the research and development expense, right? And the reason there isn't a gross margin line is because it's already been counted as revenue impacts and as cost of sales impacts. That's how you get to gross margin. You take the revenue minus the cost of sales. Uh, so at this line, I have already overestimated how much gross margin Tesla would have by $421 million. And I'll show you where I got that from. Um, here's what I was forecasting for Tesla's foreign currency exchange impact. Um, and all the signs are flipped here. Um, or the, the revenue signs are flipped anyway to make a waterfall chart. I know that's confusing. I'm just going to ignore it and keep going. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can incentivize Loki again. Hey, buddy. I got another one for you. You want that? Check it out. That's a milk bone. I'm just going to drop it right here. Let's see if he'll come get that. Uh, all right, so there's my $421 million that I was forecasting would be a favorable impact. Uh, so I had, you know, over a billion dollars worth of this revenue and almost a billion dollars worth of uh, cost of sales, worth of foreign currency exchange inflating 
the presentation in U.S. dollars of Tesla's global earnings. And uh, didn't happen. <laughs> so I missed at the gross margin line. I was too high by $281 million. Uh, $421 million of that was the foreign currency exchange impact. So if I just hadn't tried to forecast foreign currency exchange impact, uh, I would have been closer. I would have been low by $140 million, the difference between those. And then at the um, income from operations and income before income taxes lines, I would have been even closer. I would have been off by only about $0.06 billion dollars if I had just not tried to forecast foreign currency translation impact, which is what Rob Maurer did, and he probably took the better approach. So I'll say what he said in his video. If you think you know how to forecast foreign currency translation impact accurately, please let me know in the comments how to do that. I thought I had taken a pretty good swipe at it, and it has not worked twice in a row. Okay, so uh, what you can see here is uh, what I forecast in this column and what Tesla reported in this column. And then to make my waterfall chart, I had to assign whether these are unfavorable or favorable variances on a waterfall chart. Uh, so if, I'll just give you the examples and that'll explain what I'm doing. If I forecast way more revenue than Tesla reported, that's an unfavorable variance. If I forecast way more cost of sales than Tesla reported, because this is an expense, it's favorable that Tesla reported less expense, right? Uh, and then for these, I was a lot closer uh, on research and development, selling general administrative, restructuring and other. This was just Bitcoin. I, I flat out did this wrong. I, I made a dumb mistake when I was trying to find my basis. Uh, otherwise, I would have had that nailed uh, kind of can't believe I made that error, but uh, I got the basis wrong. I, I picked another number that happened in the same quarter instead of looking into the prior quarter and the quarter before that to arrive at the previous low basis. Um, then we've got interest income, interest expense, other expense net. Uh, between those three line items, I only missed by $1 million. <laughs> I had offsetting variances in that section. Uh, so yeah, I was I was only high by three hundred sixty one million dollars at the income before taxes line, four hundred twenty one million dollars of which was my foreign currency translation impact forecast that ended up being wrong directionally, and then I blew it again at the income taxes line, expecting a negative number here. Tesla reported a positive number because they did not take that one time tax favorability. I mentioned that already. Uh, so in the section below, so here's the dollar uh, eighteen that Tesla reported. There's the dollar fifty two uh, that I had forecast. Uh, that's the gap basic. If you do the non gap, uh, that's here. Dollar uh, forty eight non gap uh, after throwing out ten cents worth of stock based compensation. I had a dollar forty eight. Uh, so in the section at the bottom, this is how you make a waterfall chart. You start with a positive number and you end with a negative number. Uh, and in between, you call out everything that changed. Uh, and you can check your work by doing a running total uh, that just adds up the number you had previously plus the impact you just added. That's what this is doing. And if you've done your waterfall chart correctly, it will add up to a cumulative number that you were trying to solve for. Uh, and you have to make it a negative number, as I noted here, for the waterfall chart to work. Uh, okay, so I've shown those as dollar amounts over here. That's what these are, and that's what's on the chart. Uh, but then just to get you a feel for, okay, how... How, how large is the magnitude of those variances? I'm stating them in terms of per share as well. So these you'll recognize are the earnings per share, actual versus estimated. And then for these, uh, I wanted to show you how much of this variance was from the foreign uh, currency exchange uh, explanation. 
And so that's what this is doing. So for example, my automotive sales revenue was high by 1,360,000,000 1,144,000,000 of which was my foreign currency exchange forecast. So the remaining variance was $216,000,000 or six cents per share. So this column is giving you the variance per share after throwing out the piece that was just my wrong foreign currency exchange impact. So you got six cents, three cents, three cents, five cents. Then for the cost of sales, 13 cents, two cents, one cent, five cents. Uh, and these are going in different directions because it's a waterfall chart, but as I mentioned above, uh, these variances are all a result of me forecasting more dollars than Tesla reported. I thought the foreign currency translation impact was going to be inflating the number of dollars Tesla reported and was wrong about that. Uh, so there's that $421 million impact. Only 140 million, as I mentioned above, left, or four cents per share worth of variance if you throw out that. And uh, was there anything else I wanted to say about this? I don't know. Uh, that's probably the end of the video. So I will check back in on Loki. He's yawning and licking his lips. Maybe he'll eat his breakfast soon. And with that, I'll outro and say if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and do that. If you want to support uh, my efforts, uh, you can check out the links in the video description. Special thank you to Kathy Kitchler and Halter Ferguson Financial, my executive producers, and I will see you in the next one.